so shiny, shiny shoulders. I hope that you're having an awesome day and today we are going to be talking about my eight month post-op update so nose itch if you're new here my name is Casey and I had the vertical sleeve gastrectomy in Tijuana Mexico with the Mexico Bariatric Center uh, my doctor was Dr. Rodriguez Lopez and I had my surgery July 13th of 2018. I will have all of my stats listed down below in the description box in case you want to check those out. And we're going to get right into it. Um, so I made a list for this month um, because I, you know, sometimes kind of ramble in these. So I'm not going to ramble. I'm going to get right to it. I have a lot of energy right now and I don't really know why. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and get right into it. So last month, um, I was talking about how I had gained weight and I gained like a, I don't know, I would say a pretty significant amount of weight. I don't really know why, um, but I did gain weight and I do want to say that I have taken that weight off. Sorry, it looks, I can like see something in my eye. Also, if you hear little puppy screams, uh, it's because we got a new puppy. He's a Great Dane. His name is Dozer or Rhino, depending on who you're talking to. Um, but yeah, he's a little cute little nugget of joy and he's just, he's so cute. But he's, uh, yeah, he's a little puppy and he whines a lot. Did I mention what he is? He's a great Dane. He's so cute. Oh my God. So I have been going to the gym for a month. It's been, uh, I guess about right at four weeks that I've been going and I am absolutely addicted to the gym. I love going to the gym. Uh, I go four to five days a week and honestly, I just... I love it. I would go every day if I could. I do a lot of strength training, um, you know, on machines and things like that. I don't do cardio as much as I did whenever I first started going. I just like to go in and, you know, kill my muscles. And I have noticed changes in my body. Um, if you've seen some people's weight loss, whenever they start losing weight, especially in their butt, <laughs> their butt kind of kind of sags, you know what I mean? It, you get like kind of like a little saggy booty and I was starting to get a slightly sag in my booty and I was not happy about that because like multi-MI, in my opinion, prior to surgery, I had a very nice butt. You know, had a nice, nice like curve to it, you know, my back and my butt and things like that. It looked really nice. Started losing weight. And I got like a little sag down there and I was not liking that. And I will say my butt looks a lot better. I'm still working on it, but damn it, it's looking a lot better. So exercise helps. So I did want to mention that, that I am seeing changes in my body and it has only been a month. So I'm just really excited to see where I'm going to be at. I do want to lose at least 20 more pounds to get to 100 pounds weight loss um, by my surgiversary, my first surgiversary. Um, I would like to lose 40 because I want to, I, I want to lose like another 40 pounds just to see where my body's at because I'm thinking that that's where I would like to stay. But... I want to lose 20 more pounds for sure by my surgiversary. So let's hope that I can do that. So really, I don't have too much else to say except, you know, going to the gym has, um, you know, really kind of changed my mindset and I can see changes in my body and I love going and um, I've been living in athleisure since I have started. I feel stronger. I feel more energized and... I have found something that I really love doing, which is going to the gym. So if you haven't started going to the gym or if you're thinking about it and you don't know, like, dude, just do it. I joined Planet Fitness and I absolutely love it. It's literally, like they say, a like judgment-free zone. I absolutely love it. So I did get a request um, on a previous video to kind of talk about the whole process of going through NBC and like the sign up process and everything that goes with that. So I am going to talk about that a little bit. So if you are kind of, you know, done here and you don't really care about this part, I will see you in the next video. 
Um, but if you do want to hear about the whole sign-up process, just keep on watching. Okay, so whenever you're thinking about getting the surgery, and if you do want to go through Mexico Bariatric Center like I did, um, I'm going to try to record my screen here either on my phone or on my laptop so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, but their website is very easy to navigate, so I want to talk about that first. Their website is MexicoBariatricCenter.com, and on their website you will find a lot of information about the different surgeries that they offer. The gastric sleeve, which is what I did. Um, the gastric bypass, which is also, you know, they're like pretty popular surgery. Duodenal switch surgery. Um, you can do a gastric balloon surgery or a revision. So a revision would be um, if you had a weight loss surgery prior to this, like um, going from a gastric sleeve to a gastric bypass, that would be a revision surgery. Um, so they have a lot of information on there about those. So if you're really unsure about the type of surgery that you want to do, you can go onto their website and they do have a lot of information on there. Or you could go onto all, any website really or Google any sort of um, you know, gastric surgeries and do all of your research. That's one thing that I do want to stress is make sure that you do your research and make sure this is something that you really want to do before you go through it because, you know, it's, it's a lifestyle change and you're going to have to make sure that that is right for you. So also on their website, besides the types of surgery and all of that information, they do have information about the surgeons that work with Mexico Bariatric Center. Like I said, mine is Dr. Rodriguez Lopez. He was a very nice man. I met him very briefly, but you know, thank you. It also talks about the hospital facility. So the Me Hospital, which is where I had my surgery done at. Also the hotel accommodations, what you need for your passport requirements. Um, the whole patient process, they do talk about that on their website as well. There's also a section on their website about cost or payment information, making your deposits, the financing, um, making payments on your surgery, so things like that. And I will talk about that in just a few minutes. Um, and they do also have success stories on there, you know, uh, from different people who have had the surgery done, their experience, and things like that. So once you have done all of your research, you know, if you're comfortable with it, you go ahead and make the next step, which is filling out a health pre-screen. And that is a section on their website. You just fill out the information, your, uh, you know, first name, last name, address, phone number, gender, date of birth, um, your height, weight, which one of the surgeries that you're interested in. Um, you can select um, if you're undecided and they will help you whenever, you know, they do contact you about that. They'll ask you if you've had any previous abdominal surgeries, if you are on, you know, any sort of heart medications, if you have a heart condition, if you have digestive issues, they want to know all of that information. That way they can help you further. So once you submit all of that information to them, um, you'll be contacted by a representative within a couple days. I, I cannot remember how long it took me. I want to say maybe two days later, two or three days later, I was contacted by a representative and we just started talking and she said, so, you know, you're interested in surgery and, you know, we started talking about it and, um, she asked me if I had a doctor preference, if I preferred a certain doctor over a different one. Like I said, they do have the doctors and their information on their website. So you can select a doctor if you would like to. I didn't really have a doctor preference so I said you can pick for me I don't really care so she selected Dr. Lopez for me and uh, once we did that we selected a surgery day so I was contacted I would say it was the last I don't know maybe the 21st the 14th or the 21st of May 2018 whenever I started going through the whole process we had set my surgery up for July 13th so after the doctor had gotten all of my information and um, all of my, you know, health stuff that I had filled out, he wanted to put me on a six-week pre-op diet, so that's what I did. And I will have my pre-op diet kind of outlined, you know, roughly um, down in the description below in case you are interested in that and knowing what I did for me personally. Um, I think everyone's kind of different, but we all follow kind of like the same guidelines. I've seen some people, they only did a two-week pre-op diet. 
Some people, they did four weeks, you know, whatever. It just kind of depends on what your doctor recommends for you. So after we selected the doctor, selected the surgery date, we talked about my pre-op diet. Then she started helping me with um, my flight setup. So pretty much with that, she just said, you know, you need to fly in on this day. Um, you have to be there before a certain time. I think it was... You had to be in San Diego before 2 o'clock on whichever day that they tell you. You have to be there, I believe, two days before surgery. Um, and then whenever you leave, which is, I think, two days after surgery, um, you need to have your flight set for, I believe it's after 3 o'clock. Or it might be like after 11. I'm sorry, I cannot remember. After that, um, you start to talk about costs. So once we were talking about how much the surgery was going to be, at that point you make a deposit for the surgery to save your surgery date. I think you have to have like a minimum of three or five hundred dollars. I could be wrong on that. I didn't take very good notes on this process. Um, but you do have to have a minimum payment to put down and your representative will talk to you about that. Um, and you have to pay the remaining balance once you're in Mexico. So you will take a cashier's check with you to Mexico and once they're doing all your pre-op blood work and everything like that, your ECG uh, or EKG, they will take the rest of your payment at that time. Um, so that is what I did. I think I paid like $2,500 down and then I took the rest of my payment to Mexico with me. I might have put $5,000 down. I think that's what I did. I don't fucking know. So once it's time to fly into San Diego, you board your plane, fly to San Diego. Um, you will have a driver contact you that, uh, the previous day just to say, Hey, I'm so-and-so I'm going to be picking you up from the airport. Um, I will talk to you tomorrow, you know, just text me or call me whenever you land and I will be there to pick you up. Um, so my driver, his name, I believe was Victor. He was a very, very sweet, very nice. And, um, he was very prompt in picking us up, very nice. He told us exactly where to go and, you know, we didn't get lost at all. Like I have mentioned before in previous videos, my husband Chris, he did go with me and um, it was a very smooth process getting there and getting back. So once he picked us up, you know, we chit chatted and he took us across the border. It didn't take any time at all. Once we got to the hotel and people started to trickle in, he started talking to a liaison there from the hospital. Um, you know, he told us kind of what to expect over the next couple days and what to expect that day. So we got into our rooms and he told us, hey, in about like an hour or whatever, you're going to need to come back down and we're going to take you over to the hospital and we're going to get your uh, pre-op blood work and all of that done and take the rest of your payment if you owe anything. So we loaded up into the van, went over to the hospital. It was maybe a 10, 15 minute drive, what didn't take us very long at all. And we got there very easy you know it was just the people that were having the surgery done that went our companions couldn't accompany couldn't accompany us since there was so many of us so we did get to the hospital we got all of the you know pre-op stuff done that we needed to we were there for I would say probably an hour hour and a half or so and then we just went back to the hotel and then chilled for the night the next day we got up and depending on when your surgery was, um, they would take you at certain times. They didn't take everyone all at once because certain surgeries were, you know, spaced out throughout the day. Um, got to the hospital, got settled in and uh, what happened? It's all kind of hazy for me. But you can go back to my first vlog and kind of watch that and just see how it was in the hospital. I haven't actually watched that video um, since I first put it up, which is almost a year ago, which is absolutely bonkers to me. I cannot believe it's been almost a year. But um, you can go back to that video. I will link it down in the description box down below just so you can go back and watch it if you haven't seen it already. And you'll kind of get what I went through during the hospital. Um, if you do have additional charges, they will let you know at the hospital, or back whenever you get um, to the hotel room. Um, I only had to pay $40 extra, and that was for some medication that I needed. 
Some people have to have like, um, you know, a hernia surgery. And sometimes that's discussed, you know, prior, just based off of your medical history. Um, it might not be just depending on what happens whenever they get in there. So you do need to be sure, um, if you, you know, you might have something that you might have to pay for. So just keep that in mind as you're going through this whole process. Netflix. Oh, be sure that you take like a laptop or something like that because a lot of the, most of the channels are in Spanish. There was one channel that played the same movie over and over again that was in English. So make sure you take like a laptop or something. So once it is time to leave, um, they will let you know what time to be down in the lobby to go home based on whatever time that your flight is. They will get all of that information from you prior to even going. So once you do book your flight information, I didn't mention this earlier, you will need to tell them what day and time your flight is. That way they can coordinate when to pick you up, drop you off and everything like that. Um, so you're going back home, you're with your driver, you know, you might have a few other people in the van with you. Getting back into the United States, depending on what time it is, can take several hours. Be prepared for that. You could be sitting in the car for several, several hours. Um, I believe it took us like three hours to get across the border. We did get there, you know, with plenty of time before our flight, but just be aware of that. Once you are back across, you get your flight home, you head home, you're good. You're home free. Um, I didn't really, you know, you don't really stay in contact with them too much. They do send you home with this lovely folder right here. Um, this does have all of your information in it. I'm not going to show it because it does have some of my personal information on here, but they send you home with a CD with something on it. Um, they send you home, um, and you know, stuff that you can give your doctor. It is all in Spanish. So your doctor will have fun trying to decipher all of that because everything that they give you, um, of what they did and all of their medical notes it is in Spanish. So just to let you know. Um, they do send you home with a letter of kind of what to expect after surgery, things like that. Um, and you know, just general information. And you also get sent home with this little meal card thing. It is like a special menu request card saying that, you know, this, I'll read you the thing. Um, the above mentioned patient has undergone gastric bariatric surgery. Please allow him slash her to order a smaller portion or from the child's menu as his slash her stomach capacity has been reduced to three ounces. This card is basically just saying, hey, I can't eat a lot of food. Don't charge me extra money for it. So most, I've never used it. Um, I still haven't even signed the back of it or anything. Um, but you do have that option, you know, to take it with you if you do need it. So I believe that that is it. I've rambled on far too long. I hope that you do have um, kind of an, excuse me. I hope that you have a little bit more of an idea of kind of what to expect whenever you go through the process with NBC. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I was very pleased with my whole experience and I would do it all over again if I could. I would have done it years ago if I could. So, hope that you have an awesome day. If you do have any questions, any special requests for me, please leave them down in the comments below and I'll be happy to get to those. And if you have any success stories, tips, tricks, anything at all to share, help with anyone, leave that down below. Um, I do post new videos every single Tuesday, so make sure that you subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every Tuesday at 6 p.m. when I post a new video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Turn it up. Let's go. Let's go.